if you reduce your estradiol levels even ever so slightly, you increase the potential for a 5 alpha reduction of testosterone into diet of testosterone, which could um, contribute to hair loss downstream. And with that out of the way, let's have a look at all of the available safety data performed on men using aromatase inhibitors, starting with exemestane. In this study performed by Maurus et al, published in December 2003, titled Pharmacokinetics and Dose Finding of a Potential Aromatase Inhibitor, Aromacin, Exemestane. In this study, they investigated healthy male volunteers between 14 to 26 years old, and they received a 25 milligrams or 50 milligrams aromacin daily for 10 days, followed by a 14 day washout between the two treatments. Baseline blood work parameters were compared to the blood work results taken at the end of each 10 day aromacin treatment. In both groups, serum estradiol decreased between 32 to 38 percent, sex hormone binding globulin decreased between 19 to 21 percent, and serum testosterone increased between 56 to 60 percent, indicating that the 25 milligram aromacin dose daily is sufficient to achieve the desired result with endogenously produced testosterone, where serum estradiol levels come down and testosterone levels come up. When you scroll down to table two, you see that there's a significant reduction in IGF-1 levels, which is to be expected when you reduce your serum estradiol levels, albeit that the reduction in IGF-1 is more pronounced at the 25 milligram dose for 10 day treatment compared to the 50 milligram dose. Triglycerides uh, stayed pretty much comparable, total cholesterol levels straight pretty comparable, HDL comparable and LDL levels comparable, but that's very likely due to the short duration of this treatment. And of course, this is a short-term study in adolescents. What we're after is longitudinal data in adults. And this study basically describes exactly what we're after, albeit not on the aromatase inhibitors that we generally use in bodybuilding. Performed by Zamuda et al, published on April 1993, titled The Effects of Testosterone Aromatization on High-Density Lipoprotein Cholesterol Level and Post-Heparin Lipolytic Activity. In this study, 14 healthy adult male weightlifters with an average age of 27 years old received either 200 milligrams testosterone enothate intramuscularly weekly, 2.5 milligrams oral testolactone, TESLAC, which is no longer available. It's a suicide inhibitor. Uh, again, it's discontinued. Four times daily for total 10 milligram per day dose or both 200 milligrams testosterone enothate intramuscularly weekly plus 2.5 milligrams testolactone four times daily for three weeks of treatment, followed by a four-week washout period before the next treatment began. The researchers tracked changes in body weight and blood work parameters related to liver function. Obviously, serum testosterone levels increased during all treatment, but increased the most during the testosterone plus testolactone treatment. As expected, smart particle, high-density lipoprotein, APOE, a1 and total cholesterol levels decreased, while lipo low density lipoprotein and APOE B levels maintained relatively similar to baseline readings, and triglycerides increased slightly, albeit insignificantly so. While body fat levels did increase due to the testosterone treatment, there were no alterations in both liver function and blood pressure me measurements during the study. Now, the study is obviously performed on testolactone, which is discontinued and no longer used in the fitness community. And it's only a reasonably short duration of time, three weeks of the testosterone enothate plus testolactone treatment. But at least serum estradiol levels weren't bottomed out, unlike many of the other studies performed on aromatase inhibitors. And maybe we can extrapolate a little bit of safety and efficacy data of testolactone and translate that to exemestane, which is also a suicide inhibitor. There's another study which looked into an estrogen intervention during testosterone replacement therapy, showing that men successfully kept their serum estradiol levels around 22 picograms per milliliter, which is basically the middle of the reference range, but a little bit too low for comfort, in my opinion, when you're after testosterone or hormone replacement therapy protocols regarding optimization. Uh, they did this with a starting dose of 0.5 milligrams anastrozole three times weekly, albeit that dosage adjustments did take place during the treatment, uh, but unfortunately they didn't track any adverse effects of these treatments, but the citation is down below in case you're interested. 
There are two other papers which I would like to highlight, which basically go over all uh, other studies previously performed on men of different ages using aromatase inhibitors for various medical conditions, including short stature, androgen deficiency, obesity, gynecomastia, and even certain cancers. This first one is performed by Deronda et al., published on June 21, 2011, titled Aromatase Inhibitors in Men, Effects and Therapeutic Options. When you scroll down to the safety and concerns segment of this paper, the authors mention that third-generation aromatase inhibitors like anastrozole or letrozole cause major side effects in postmenopausal women who are treated for estrogen-positive breast cancers like I highlighted at the start of this video. In most of the studies performed on men, estradiol levels decreased only slightly usually resulting in an increase of gonadotropin hormones like luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone when aromatase inhibitors are administered to men not using exogenous testosterone replacement therapy, uh, which raises testosterone and thus estradiol levels downstream, which are controlling then with the use of an aromatase inhibitor. So basically total testosterone, free testosterone, and a luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone levels go up while, uh, while using aromatase inhibitors during androgen deficiency or other contexts to raise total testosterone levels, but estradiol levels stay under control. And while there is a concern of loss of bone mineral density in these androgen deficient men, there seem to be little instances of this occurring in men using aromatase inhibitors unless, 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 unless serum estradiol levels are crushed for longer periods of time. And we'll get into this a little bit later on. Serum lipids might skew slightly, complete blood count parameters might go up and increase in the manicret and total red blood cell count, which is to be expected when there's an increase in total testosterone levels, as this is also seen on hormone replacement therapy protocols. So if you're already on hormone replacement therapy and you start using aromatase inhibitors, well, your lipids are already skewed, they might skew a little bit more, and your complete blood count might also be skewed, it might skew a little bit more because total testosterone levels are going to go up, obviously. And there's conflicting evidence regarding the effects of letrozole and anastrozole on cognition. No effects in adolescents, but minimal improvement of verbal memory on the elderly using hormone replacement therapy. So that might indicate that estradiol does play a contributing role in verbal mem memory in the elderly when they're otherwise androgen deficient and then transitioning into hormone replacement therapy, right? This increase in estradiol in that context might be warranted. And this review paper is a lot more recent, performed by Korani et al., published in January, March edition 2023, aromatized inhibitors in male a literature review. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't really go over the potential adverse effects of aromatized inhibitors, but it just lists the beneficial effects under various medical conditions, none of which, besides gynecomastia maybe, are conditions that fitness enthusiasts generally suffer from. The only concern of this paper, like many other papers mentioned beforehand, is the loss of bone mineral density. And there's actually a lot more studies that go over the potential adverse effects of aromatase inhibitors in men, whether they use exogenous testosterone hormone replacement therapy or not. But I think it's better if I just summarize all of those results instead of highlighting individual studies and making my editor go crazy. So here are the potential adverse effects of aromatase inhibitors in men. Loss of bone mineral density, which is, well, attenuated by exogenous anabolic androgenic steroids like testosterone, nandrolone, etc. Tamoxifen, Nolvidex, albeit that that also lowers serum estradiol levels with one of its metabolites, nor endoxifen. And I don't think that tamoxifen is very sustainable because of blood clots, uh, reduction of IGF-1, and uh, maybe emotional disturbances by activating the estrogen receptors in the brain. And the loss of bone mineral density is also attenuated by keeping your serum estradiol levels over 11 picograms per milliliter or 40 picomoles per liter. We'll get into that a little bit later on. Uh, muscle or tendon tears by uh, impairing estrogen-mediated collagen synthesis. Now, of course, um, muscle and tendon tears can also occur during a contest prep, especially towards the end where aromatase inhibitors are generally abused if you cross serum estradiol levels uh, to uh, single digits to get as lean and as shredded as possible to lose the last little bit of body fat and to make uh, the water loss a little bit easier before stepping on stage. And of course, wind stroll <laughs> is also heavily used towards the end of a contest prep. 
So um, if estradiol contributes to collagen synthesis and you take Winstrol, which alters the ratio between collagen types, but you crush your serum estradiol levels, then obviously you're more susceptible to muscle tear. So I don't think this is something that you as an individual taking aromatase inhibitors, keeping serum estradiol levels between the middle to the top of the reference range has to worry about. Uh, hair loss. Always an issue with aromatase inhibitors by raising serum dihydrotestosterone levels. Right, this is a valid concern. This can happen at any dose. If you reduce your estradiol levels, even ever so slightly, you increase the potential for a 5 alpha reduction of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone, which could um, contribute to hair loss downstream. Now, if this is an issue for you, then don't take aromatase inhibitors, obviously. And if you uh, suffer from hair loss and you take a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor to bring your dihydrotestosterone testosterone levels down, then what, what is going to happen, right? Testosterone is going to aromatize into estradiol. Your estradiol levels are higher. And now you have gyno, right? You can't win. <laughs> so if you're worried about hair loss, topical solutions only. Don't take exogenous testosterone replacement therapy because you're going through this lower coaster of aromatase inhibitors, 5 alpha reductase inhibitors, hair loss, gynecomastia, and maybe you are able to mitigate your hair loss and your gynecomastia, and now your dick doesn't work. So you're going to have to sacrifice something, bro. Um, skewed lipid parameters and cardiovascular disease. Again, like I mentioned before, anastrozole inhibits cholesterol metabolism and thus total cholesterol levels and low density lipoprotein levels go up to a higher degree compared to exemestane, right? So if you have to make a choice, go with exemestane. And if you're worried about skewed lipid parameters and cardiovascular disease, stay away from synthetic carrier oil, which raise your high sensitivity C-reactive protein levels to the moon. And well, stay away from steroids in general because they will all skew your lipid parameters, I don't think that a little bit of exemestane on top, on top of your steroid cycle is going to skew your lipids any more than all of the steroids that you're already taking. And otherwise, well, we have the fish oil, the citrus bergamot, the azetamide, the daily fasted cardio, the healthy eating, right? Don't underestimate following a healthy lifestyle. It is always a concern that aromatized inhibitors can cause cognitive impairment and neurodegradation and it can raise the neurotoxic and cardiotoxic potential of testosterone, nandrolone, dianabol, and trestolone by inhibiting conversion of testosterone into estradiol, nandrolone into estradiol, dianabol into methyl estradiol, and trestolone into 7-alpha methyl estradiol, which might be inherently uh, more neurotoxic or cardiotoxic because the aromatization is impaired. Now, I think all of these potential adverse effects should be a non-issue if you aim to keep your serum estradiol levels to the middle, to the top of the reference range and choose exemestane over anastrozole or letrozole because that seems to skew your lipid parameters more.